easy dry filament storage. So I like 3D printing stuff. I want my filament consistent and dry, um, especially when you're doing stuff like printing part kits for people. Um, so I live in a really human environment. Um, I like to print things like ABS and ASA a lot. Um, these filaments can kind of soak in water over time and affect your quality. Um, I've toyed with a lot of things like Ziploc bags and big bins that you, uh, you know, open up and dig into and find your filament. But I found that uh, I like these uh, individual filament storage uh, bins. Uh, so I'm going to show these to you, uh, give you the details on them. Uh, so this is what I came up with. Um, these uh, are just my ready-made spools. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see more of the shelf. Um, these are just what I have ready to go or are par partially used. I want to pick out a color, just kind of the things I have on hand. Um, I print a lot of uh, repetitive colors like black and red, and I have huge amounts of refills for those in another closet. Um, they're still in their original bags that have the desk in them. Um, <clears throat> Once in a while, I'll pull out the dehydrator and um, uh, dehydrate uh, the spools before I put them in these containers. Uh, but these containers will also draw some moisture out. Uh, if you put the, the uh, filament in the containers, it'll help draw the moisture out as well. Uh, so uh, let me zoom out a little more and I'll show you the bins that I use. Sorry, figure out how to work this thing. Okay, so here's the bins that I use. Uh, let's go over the details on these. Uh, this is a four liter size bin. Um, and you can get the measurements off Amazon, but I'll give you some rough measurements here in freedom units. Uh, they're about nine and a half inches tall. They're about uh, nine and three quarter inches deep. And they are about uh, four and a quarter inches wide. So um, you can get these off of Amazon from a number of various sellers. I'm going to link to a couple of the sellers that I've used in the past. Uh, but uh, short story is you just need to look at the bin and make sure that it matches what you've already, uh, that matches this bin or ones that you've already bought. Um, got these uh, three ridges on the side here. Got a graduated area on the front. And uh, one of the ways you can uh, identify these as well is there's a, hex-shaped uh, mold on the top as, long as, as well as the spout. So these are dry goods bins. They're meant for basically cereal boxes is what are um, cereal uh, from boxes is what they're used for a lot for in the U.S. Uh, these fit every kilogram roll I've tried, uh, including the slant uh, spr printable spools, which is uh, what this is. Um, I've used uh, eSun. I've used um, KVP. Uh, molded spools, the, the, the slant spools. I've used, um, uh, gosh, there's a couple more that I just can't think of right off the top of my head. Uh, Polymaker, uh, I've used uh, their ASA rolls in here. Um, Hatchbox fits. Um, uh, Polylight PLA from Polymaker. Uh, I think that covers the, the gamut of what I have. Um, <clears throat> So I uh, gave you the identification for these, and I'll give you links to a couple places on, on Amazon to buy these. Um, <clears throat> they uh, also include a pretty cool uh, set of um, chalk. They're, they're supposed to be chalk stickers. So they're supposed to look like little chalk boards. Uh, but you can uh, write your, you know, whatever it is on here. And then a month later, if you need to pull what's in the bin out and replace it with something else, you just come over and with a uh, little paper towel, maybe a little bit of alcohol. You can uh, wipe these off and then you can write whatever your new thing is. Really handy and if you buy several sets of these bins, you'll end up with a lot of these. Uh, uh, so these are sized for storage only. Uh, they do not have room for rollers. Maybe if you're really fancy, you might could find a way of making really skinny rollers, but the the spool is basically the width of the bin. So uh, I would uh, consider these uh, for storage only, uh, but I like that because that keeps these uh, really compact and tidy and saves you shelf space. And uh, uh, if you use these only for storage, you don't have to worry about where to put the PTFE filling, uh, fitting or anything. Just get the spool out, use it. When you're done using it, um, put it back in the bin. Uh, and 
the uh, desiccant that's in here will uh, keep the moisture out of it. So let's go on to the uh, the other thing you'll need, which is a color changing desiccant. Uh, I use this uh, dry and dry brand. You get it off Amazon, but any any color changing desiccant will do. Uh, this particular desiccant is orange, and it turns to a dark green when it is wet. Um, <clears throat> these come in various sizes. I'm using the quart or two pound size, as you can see here. Uh, you can get small pouch sizes, or you can get big jugs or um, uh, buckets of that stuff. It's pretty cheap. Uh, you can uh, obviously uh, this color changes and is reusable so you can put this in the oven and bake it for 200 degrees Fahrenheit uh, and uh, for about two hours and it will turn this back to orange just pull it out when it's back orange and then you can put it back into a sealed container and it's ready to use again uh, the simple way to use this is actually just to pour this directly into the bin and let it set on the bottom uh, you clear bin so you can look through and see uh, if the desiccant's used up or not. Uh, the uh, other way you can use it is the way I use it, which is I put a fancy hy hygrometer, hydro hydrometer, hydrometer. I don't know how you say it. This is humidity. So uh, the, these come in various shapes and sizes. Um, I like the uh, this rectangular size because it's easy to find uh, a holder. Uh, this holder has uh, the desiccant in it. So uh, there's a small uh, amount of desiccant right here in the front. So you put the desiccant, you put the, uh, the humidity meter right in here, and you can see the difference in uh, humidity. Hopefully uh, you can make that out on camera. It's 39% in the room, it's 21% in the bin, which is pretty good. Now I'm getting, obviously these are pretty low, low dollar items, so they're gonna vary, but I'm getting roughly 20 to 25% readings in the bin on average, uh, and, and then of course, I live in southern Alabama. The humidity is horrible here, and I'm in a kind of a second floor bonus room area, so the humidity varies a lot up here. It's a nice, cool, crisp day uh, uh, here, uh, uh, so it's only 41% humidity, but easily 70-80% humidity uh, in the middle of summer uh, up here. Even though this is climate controlled, it's uh, not as well climate controlled upstairs in my house, so uh, comes in really handy for me. Um, these uh, are very uh, economical. Uh, you would not, you wouldn't, probably wouldn't think about how cheap these are, but they're only about two dollars a piece when you buy these in a twelve pack. Uh, so um, the bins are thirty dollars for a six pack, approximately. At the time I'm making this video, uh, so you can get six of these for thirty bucks, and uh, six of these is going to cost you about twelve. So uh, for a little over forty bucks, um, plus a dollar to a desiccant, so. Uh, you know, you're probably talking, um, probably talking six, seven dollars, maybe seven dollars a piece. Yeah, about seven dollars a piece for this storage system. It'll last you forever. Eventually, you'll have to replace the batteries in this. Uh, take little cell replaceable cell uh, button batteries. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, this is it. This is what I use. This is what I like. Um, I hope you found this helpful. Um, you know, if you did, please do the typical YouTube thing. You know, I don't really uh, spend a lot of production value on these, obviously, but I try to show things that uh, I think might be helpful and useful to other people. Uh, so if you like that kind of thing, you know, like, share, subscribe, the whole bit. Um, hope this helps. See ya.